In this video, you will see me wearing a lab coat for some reason, smashing together two carts. Welcome to Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry for a video on momentum and using Vernier video analysis. Just a disclaimer, I'm no way paid by Vernier. I just think that they make great software and equipment for physics. We'll be using the new Vernier video analysis tool for this investigation. You can get a free site license for this to use through June 2020 if you're a teacher. If you're a student, you'll need to get a link from your teacher to access the app. One of the great things about this new app is that it runs completely in browser. You do not need to install any software. If you've used the video analysis tools in Logger Pro, there's some similarities, but also a lot of improvements. So you'll need to go to videoanalysis.app or get a link from your teacher. If you haven't used it yet, it's going to ask for your license key, or you can just go ahead and paste in the URL that you get from your teacher. The load screen looks like this. It's gonna ask you to import a video. If you're on a Chromebook, this will be a little bit different. You can import files from Google Drive. I'm working on a Mac right now. I will choose the video file that you saw before to analyze. It'll import the video, and you'll see a crosshair that you can move if you are hovering over the video area. In any video analysis, one of the first things you need to do is set a scale. You do that over here on the left. It brings two circles on the screen and it says move to a known separation to set scale. In this video, the track that I'm using is 120 centimeters long. I'm going to drag the circles to the end of the track. I'm going to set it to 120 centimeters. You could also set it to 1.2 meters if you preferred your analysis to be measured in meters. For this momentum analysis, I think it's actually a little bit easier to use centimeters. The numbers come out a little bit more nicely. So now we've set our scale, and I'm going to click on Add, and I see the crosshair again. What I want to do is track the motion of both carts as they move before the collision and after the collision. I can frame forward this with this button until the carts have left my hand. So right now, the cart on the left, I've given it a push. It's gonna move with fairly constant velocity because it's a low friction cart. I wanna track its motion. One of the nice things you can do here under advanced video options is choose how many frames you'd like to advance. This is standard definition video. If you choose every frame, you'll be marking a position every 1 30th of a second. That's not always really necessary. I'm gonna have this actually frame forward five frames each time I click a position. That's gonna make our work go a little bit quicker. I've decided to track the front edge of the cart. So I will locate that and click. It automatically advances five frames. Notice that the cart has moved to the right. I'll continue doing that until we get close to collision. That's right about where they're in contact hitting. Notice on the right, I'm getting a graph, a position versus time graph, both in the X direction and the Y direction. There's no movement in the up-down direction. So I'm going to click to clear the Y direction data. It's not really needed in this investigation. One of the nice features in this is if you'd like to see anything a little bit bigger, there are handles that you can drag. I wanna take a look at the position versus time graph. So I'm gonna drag it to the left and down. Now I can see that these plotted points are very linear and that makes sense because the cart's moving with constant velocity. I can find the slope of the line that goes through these points to find the speed, but I'm gonna wait a moment to do that. I wanna go back to the video and plot the points after collision. The cart on the left rebounds fairly quickly. You'll see if I frame forward once that it really kicks back to the left at high speed. One thing I can do here is turn off the trails so that the points that I've already plotted don't interfere with my plots for the rebound. You can do that with this button. And then I'll go back to adding points with the crosshair. It's contacting the bumper at the end of the cart. So I'm not so sure that's a great data point, but let's take a closer look at the graph. So we see data points with a positive slope as the cart moved to the right. Somewhere in here it rebounded. And then I've only got three data points as it rebounds more quickly back to the left. These three data points are going to have a fairly steep negative slope. What I need to know to analyze the momentum of the cart is two variables, the mass of the cart and the speed of the cart. These particular carts have a mass of 500 grams or 0.5 kilograms. 
Now let me use the trend line tool to find the speed of each cart. I can highlight the area I'm interested in and then go to this button down here. This is the graph tools button. What I'd like to do is apply a curve fit. Even though it's a linear relationship here, we'll still use that button. When I click it, the default is to give a linear curve fit. And you can see already that the data points fit align quite well. If I click apply, I get a data box. It's telling me that the equation is in the form y equals mx plus b. The thing I'm most interested in here is the slope, m. The slope is listed as 23.26. That would be measured in centimeters per second since I'm measuring on the y-axis position in centimeters and on the x-axis time in seconds. That describes the motion of the cart before collision. After the collision, remember that it rebounded very quickly to the left. I only have three data points, but they look to form a line pretty well. I use the same technique. I highlight the data points, go to the Graph Tools button, and select Apply Curve Fit. Again, it's linear, and you can see that the line fits the data points quite well. When I click Apply, I'll get a new data box that shows me that the slope is negative 68.54 centimeters per second. Now I have everything I need to know to calculate the momentum of that cart before and after collision. Here's a screenshot of a handout that you can use to organize your calculations. I'll post a link to this handout in the description. I'll also post a link to some additional videos that you can download and analyze. This handout reminds us that the calculation for momentum is just mass times velocity. We're going to use kilograms for mass and centimeters per second for velocity. Again, the numbers just work out a little bit more nicely when you use those units. It's asking me to calculate the total momentum before collision and after collision. I'm going to say the cart that I just analyzed is cart 1. The total momentum before the collision is going to be the mass of the cart. Again, I'm going to use 0.5 kilograms times the velocity of the cart. Again, I got that from the slope using the video analysis tool. The slope of the line was 23.26 centimeters per second. That's the velocity. I'll draw a line here to separate before and after. After the collision, the cart's mass is still 0.5 kilograms. And now it has a negative velocity because it's moving to the left. Momentum is a vector, so direction matters. We do want to keep it as a negative value. It was negative 68.54 centimeters per second. Next, we'll go ahead and use a calculator to calculate those values. The momentum of cart one before the collision is 11.63 units of momentum. Here, our units of momentum are kilogram centimeters per second. We can just write that as kilogram dot centimeters per second. After the collision, the momentum equals negative 34.27 kilogram centimeters per second. That's a summary of the momentum of cart one before the collision and after the collision. I'll draw a line and we'll do a similar calculation for cart two. If you'd like to see that analysis, there's a link in the end card. I'll walk through that full analysis in that video. Thanks for watching.